you're right that it was made by a father figure in my life, but not my platonic father. This was actually made by you. Um, Lockie, <laughs> what do we got? Jesus Christ, where did you get that? Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Wine for the People. We're doing more blind wines this week, except this time we've got one that stands out for the rest. I'll tell you why in a second. So, five of these are from Sometimes Always. Big thank you to those guys, as always. If you want 10% off the majority of the wines that we're drinking, one of these you can't have, hop down into the Discord. There is a link in our Discord each and every week. You'll get 10% off the wines that we taste on the show. Now, the reason I say that this one's a little bit special is, speaking of Discord, I've had a bloke by the name of R... Riley get in touch with me. He uh, DM'd me a few weeks ago and we've been chatting back and forth. Basically, Riley went to school with Brendo, right? So this is back in, uh, where is it? Nudgy College in Queensland. Apparently, Riley was 16 at the time and as an extension of the agricultural program, they made a wine. This is the first wine that Brendan ever had anything to do with. He made this in high school and we've got a bottle of it. It's from 2006, so there's a reasonable chance it's gonna taste like more of a salad dressing than a glass of wine, but I don't know where it is in the lineup. Looking at them, I think I can tell where it is in the lineup, but we are gonna taste through it. So we're trying to stitch Brendan up up and see if he can remember the first wine that he ever made. Without further ado, let's get into it. Do you even shabbly? Wine number one we have. Fun little orange number to start us off with. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I don't know, I'm kind of thinking back to last week's sparklings. I'm like, oh, I kind of want to go back to last week. Orange wine! Yay! Reductive orange wine! Yay! Yeah, like lemon pith and strength. Cracking acid, good tannin. Mm. The acidity's good, the tannin's good, the fruit profile's all right, but it just lacks a bit round the edges. It's all, it's all, it's also a little bit mousy too. In terms of how much of it I'd like to drink, I'll take three bottles of it. Not the greatest thing in the world. Varietally, uh, it's gonna have some sort of Pinot Grigio in there. High acid, really interesting sort of bulbous front palate. It attacks like a teardrop, hits the palate, and then goes boom. Really interesting spice on the attack, which. Kind of threw me initially. I really enjoy it. I really, really, really enjoy it. Dollars wise, 30 bucks. Hope it's not much more than that. Probably wouldn't pay any more than that, to be honest. This isn't looking as good as I think it could look. That's the thing about wine. If you fuck up one year, you gotta you got wait 12 months to do it the next year. Um, so uh, I reckon there's enough finesse and character here to, for me to kind of take note of this winemaker and make sure I try them again next year. It's all red or shades thereof from here on out. The fact that I'm seeing it at this colour with a faded rim and I'm seeing American oak on the nose and jammy fruit, my head kind of goes to Spain. That's kind of where I'm, I'm sitting at because I have a propensity to use that style of oak and I'm guessing this well may be like some kind of Tempranillo. Smells like yummy. Very bright, very fresh. Big red cherry thing, like a bit of plum. I'm very happy with my assessment of that Pinot Noir. At no point have I been led astray, and I like it quite a bit, actually. It's very inoffensive, that's very drinkable. Um, I like the color of it, I like the nose on it, I like the flavor of it. Wine doesn't really have personality, so I can't sting it for that. Look, cool, great, wow. The lactone sort of milkiness from that oak really flows through onto the palate, and I find it a little bit distracting. I think this wine is going to be more expensive than what I'd pay for it, so I think this wine's probably closer to like the 60 buck mark. This is a perfect like 35, I hope it's 35 bucks, it should be 35 dollars. So I think it's just a cracking wine, it's definitely like an Aussie thing, it's probably like a Vale number or something like that. I'm going to grab half a dozen because I think this is one of those wines you want to reach toward and it's like, oh god damn it, I need a glass of wine, you want this to be it. Ah, really well done from the, from the producer. Moving on to the next little red wine, another faded rim number. This is a bit better pace. You know, bright raspberry fresh jumping out of the glass. Yeah, it's got this lovely pinosity to it. It smells like Pinot. It's got, it got, it's pure Pinot vibrancy. It's very savory though. Very like leafy, could be, could be New Zealand, could be Adelaide Hills. Yum, okay. Not gonna think this is the Pinot. Um, flatter through the mid palette, like a little bit more. Don't know why I keep coming back to cardboard as a tasting note for wine, but I just can't move past cardboard as being a really good way to describe the sort of like, yeah, flatness that's just going on through the middle, which I quite like, to be honest with you. Look, dope, fun, middle of the road wine. Not offensive at all. Is it like, making me go, holy shit, Batman. I really need this in my cellar. Not really but I would definitely buy plenty of it just for drinking purposes. It feels like Pinot, but there's these really interesting flavors that kind of take you out of the normal, 
of the particular style. So it gets down to this kind of almost stewed, dried character, which I think is really fascinating. Yeah, it, if the last one tastes like supermarket fruit, this kind of tastes like wild fruit. It's like wild fruit. In the sense that like, as much as we like to shit on um, big corporations and mass produced fruit and things like that, they're making it for a reason. They're making it because everyone likes those flavors. And then you go to like that weird sort of side of the road vendor and you try their fruit. And you know deep down it doesn't taste quite as juicy or quite as sweet, but you're looking the person who grew it in the eye, so you have to say it's the most enthralling thing you've ever had. That's how I feel about those two wines. These are really good safe bets. So you can feel great that you might be supporting a really small producer doing something fun and different. Typically they're not gonna cost you an arm or a leg and they are all typically really yummy and delicious. Uh, so I'm gonna be going about 35 bucks a bottle and I'm gonna buy 12. Cool wine, fantastic, well done. Six, number six, number four out of six, Jesus Christ. That is a lovely color, oh look at that. It's the sort of thing that um, King's nightgown would be like trimmed with. Yeah, tough one. This one's this one's a little bit green, a little bit minty. I want to say Cabernet, but it doesn't make me feel like Cabernet. This really doesn't feel like Cabernet one. To be honest, it feels like an Ataro Trousseau. Slight rubbery reductiveness. Uh, I think that's an awesome line. Very finely crafted, and it's got this beautiful focus on primary fruit, but there's this lovely structural, erring on green tannin profile, but adds this lovely kind of cumin clove spice to the wine that actually has, has this lovely layer of complexity around what could easily be deemed as a very boring up up and down kind of just bistro style wine. But I think this is actually really good. Love it, love the smell of that, love the color of it. Guarantee you I'm not gonna like the taste of it. See, this is why I'm never gonna be a small business owner because my guarantees don't mean shit. That's tasty as hell. For those wine nerds amongst us, this has what I call varietal reduction. So there are some varieties Chardonnay is a great example of this, where reduction is normal, expected, and it builds into the variety. This has it, I'm not too sure what variety it could be, but those varieties that I just listed before, Trousseau, Merlot, and whatnot, they all kind of feel like, you know, reduction. Back of my head's just screaming, Mataro. So I just want to drink this wine and not think about it. I want to drink a glass of it, just go, yep, that is my glass of red wine. Very, very cool. It's got to be rosé. It's not Spikinzi Pinot Gris. We went through that like six months ago. We're not doing that shit anymore. This is rosé. It looks like blood orange juice. Got me vibing on Nebbiolo or Sangiovese rosé. Uh, well made. Strawberries, cream, uh, you know, all the lovely luscious things that look like a potpourri thing going on as well. Very delicate, very light. Could have really searched for it. Very floral. It's extremely floral. Like fringe, like literally being attacked by white flowers. Oh, yum. Yeah, yeah. So easy to drink. Strawberry and cream rosé. That's what that is. Ready for me to try and use a wine term that I've heard Brendan use that I don't really understand and I don't think is the right word. It's like lactones or something. It tastes kind of milky. Definitely a Sanye style uh, rosé. It's a bleed off. Um, the acidity being markedly lower really kind of indicates this. I like that lower acidity though. It really plays in that strawberries and cream vibe. Well, I'd drink the absolute bejesus out of it. Great acidity, great structure. It's strawberries and cream like Provence Rosé with extra steps, but each of those extra steps are really, really fucking good. That's what I wanted all the rosés to taste like when I ordered them and then they ended up tasting way drier. Like, it's not sweet, but it does have this real fruit forward flavor. A little bit of that creaminess. Could be colder, but not complaining. Rosé, 12, and give it to me for 38. That magic 38 number. Last one of the lineup, and it's brown. It's fucking brown. What is this? It's like Coca Cola. There is like, and it's sedimenty. Oh, yeah. That smells great. Fuck him. Oh, that smells really good. <laughs> Hopefully, it tastes shit because if he's achieved a good wine in high school, I'm going to be furious at him. It looks like fucking dad's old tour barrel. Jesus Christ. This is my gut feeling here. This is Cabernet. This is from, I want to say it's from Australia, but it's actually quite, uh, like how the fuck did this even end up here? Firstly, I don't think this has come from sometimes always, and if it has, it's brave for them to sell this wine. Uh, this wine should not be consumed. Stewed to the point of like, it feels sweet. All I can taste is soy sauce and like maple syrup, and it's just unpleasant. It's good for content, and that's about it. It's annoyingly drinkable. Yeah, wow. Um, not the best old red wine that I've ever had, not by the length of the straight, but it's so far away from the worst as well. The fact that a bunch of high schoolers made this is either a fluke or the person I'm working for is actually quite talented. Um, yeah, wow. 
I don't know where this has come from. I don't know what time this has come from. I think this is like early 80s, maybe late 70s. I don't think, I think I'm, I'm being had here. I reckon someone's worked in cahoots where they're like Henry Doyle. I don't think it was Noah, it was either Henry or you who worked in cahoots to put this wine in front of us because I don't know of any retailer that would ever sell one of these. Yuck, no. I have written down no to what I think it is. Zero bottles and uh, zero monies. I would only taste it if it was n I was not charged for it. And that's exactly what's happened. Yeah, there's no point in me talking. I, it, I know what this is. Like, it's that Shiraz. It's from 2006. There's no price on it. It's priceless in the sense that Brendan's wine from high school. Um, but yeah, this is a good... I, I can't believe how good this tastes. I genuinely thought we were going to come in here and like we were going to have to spit this out because it tastes like vinegar. I wouldn't pay that much for this wine. I would probably pay around about 40 bucks, and that's the respect price for the for the age and the maturation. But I am going to be fascinated to know what the guys thought of this one. Anyway, let's see what they think. Alrighty, another six wines. Interesting little lineup that we had here this week. How'd you guys go with it? Some hits, some low points, but overall, I'd say it's pretty damn good. I enjoyed the sparkling bracket far better than this, but there is some curious shit here. There's some really interesting shit here, some so curious shit in here. Um, um, I, I'm, I'm keen to get into it. As we always do, let's start out with wine number one. I thought that this was going to be some white blend, so much like my high school maths exam, I thought I'd just show my working right down Pinot Gris and hope that there was some of that in there. You didn't hit the Aligote button, I'm, I'm impressed. Did you hit the Aligote button? No. no. Yeah, that would no. be a crazy no. thing to this do. This textbook to orange, absolutely loved it. 42 and 12, please. Thought it was fantastic. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, no. yeah, I had three for 30, you had 12 for 40 something. Um, how much was it like? <laughs> Yummy. No. No. Yummy, no. All for me. What do we got? Oh yeah, we've also, uh, our cameras decided to die this week. So, so we're doing it old, old school, school, baby. So we've got a Tuscan uh, little orange wine. Uh, it says uh, Trebianco, which I'm guessing is Trebiano. Yeah. Chardonnay, Gewurz, Tremonet, Sauvignon Blanc, and Malvasia. Yeah. That's the, the Pinot Gris! The only one! It's the only one! <laughs> Damn it. Um, for 60 bucks though. Yeah, you pay, you, I wouldn't pay, like I said, I'd pay 40, too. That was ambitious. Um, I, the magic number's pretty accurate on this one. I just think it's, it's. I don't know, I really liked the lanolin-y sort of mandarin marmalade thing. I, I, thought it was really I liked all of those parts of it too, yeah. but I didn't like the rest of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Speaking of highlights, uh, yeah, wine number two. Sick. I like this. This I like is this really a lot. good. This is like classic McLaren Vale Grenache or something like that. I had a <sighs> feeling. I was tossing I, up between Grenache and Pinot on it. Len it on could, Pinot but I was end. honestly the exact same. I was in the yeah. halfway house between the two. I was like, is this Yarra Valley Pinot or is it Grenache? I couldn't decide between I the two. I thought it was fucking foul. I wanted 20 bucks, two of them, and I thought it was an over-oaked, completely drawn out, just no fruit left, American oat, possibly Rioja. Are you sure? Just happened? I just, Are you I, sure? I couldn't see anything beyond the, the rampant use of oat. How much? 26. All right, Shit. cool. In the halfway house. Mandy, uh, this is Mildura. This is a blend of Mildura. Um, and what is the... Sangiovese. Sangio. Probably a little bit yeah. too ripe because it's from the Riverlands. But uh, yeah, but as far as like attempting to make wine from that particular variety in that particular place, I think it's a fucking stellar job. And for 25 bucks, I think you can't go wrong with that. Wine number three. Uh, 12, loved it. Thought it was awesome. Uh, loved it, 12. Hey, <laughs> finally, we're back. Uh, back to normality. Regular schedule programming. And three. <laughs> oh we are God. back to regular programming. 12 for 35. Uh, 12 for 58. Ooh. Oh, Yummy. good pick. Yummy. What do we got? Lover. Um, this is from uh, Riverland. Grenache. Oh, Riverland. Tinta Variety. Barocca. Tinta Barocca. <laughs> what? This is very tasty. It's delicious. I really it's, like that one. Very it's very probably very my wine or wine up, I reckon. Next All right. two wines have something to say about that for me. Right. Oh, really? Wine number four. I loved this. I thought this was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I this really cool. liked this. Fuck no. Not oh my chance. god, what no. the fuck no. is going on? Two, two bottles, 28 bucks. Um, <laughs> 12 for 48. I had six for 30. Ooh, yeah, it's good price. That's really good price. That's, That's cool. White cool. Nero. Nero Davila from the Barossa. It's a pretty good right. Well, actually, that, cool that kind of makes a bit of sense. Because yeah. it's got the ripeness of something like a Shiraz, but a, a, bit, a bit more of retention of acidity. Uh, and a Bar the Barossa Valley is a place you should absolutely grow Nero. <laughs> Um, because it's warm enough, it's dry enough. I think it's a great place for it. I think I thought this was fantastic, and Brendan, uh, one of the biggest champions of Nero Darbo in Australia, has just shat on one. Yeah, yeah. Um, fantastic. Just make it, <laughs> just make it better. 
<laughs> one number five. Uh, fuck yeah. Fuck good. yeah. Hell yeah. That's good. Oh, this is yeah. going to be one of the lineup by the sounds of things. This uh, is great rose. 12 uh, for 38. 12 for 40. 6 for 28. Oh, oh yes. you're kidding. Good. Pretty good. good. Sanye. Fuck yeah. yeah. Big game. Definitely a Sanye. Um, are you sure that's $33? Fuck yeah. Cool. Jump on the fucking board for this stuff. It's the cheapest BK one of all time. BK Perfect. boys. Yeah. Um, Pretty as well. Yeah, gorgeous. Love the label. Uh, and this is a Pinot Noir. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Sanye. So mm -hmm. I think it's probably bleeding off all the juice to make his uh, red wines, uh, his Pinot red wines, a bit I more structured and a bit more savoury. Uh, you just said exactly what's written on there. Well done, Noah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um, really, really, really cool. Uh, I think any, anyone who wants like a off the beaten path style of rosé will be more than happy to chuck a couple of bottles of this in their car. And like such, such a, a really great example of Sanye and that style, like that's textbook. That is so good. Wine number six. Mm -hmm. How'd we go? No. No? No, oh, that's, really? that's my only word, no. Uh, cool, interesting. Um, firstly, when I saw it, I was like, fuck's going on here. Uh -huh. Secondly, when I smelt it, I thought, oh, this is interesting. And I tasted it, I thought, this is even more interesting. And then suddenly I had to like piece together data in my head. First thing is, there's no way in heck that Sometimes Always is selling that because that would be the most risky <laughs> fucking move ever. It's a wild move. So sometimes therefore, always. secondly, I reckon you're having one up on us. Right. With Lockie. I thought this wine was remarkably well aged. I take a stab that it was a cab, Kunawara. Feels early 80s, but it could actually be like some of the warmer vintages in the early 90s, like a 93. But it just doesn't have a core of fruit, it's just thin. And so I think it's just been, I think this is like a wine made by potentially your old man mm -hmm. uh, that's been matured in uh, your old man cellars for a decent, because I know he's got a really good cellar. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, I think maybe early 90s, somewhere between the 80s and 90s. Yeah, look, you're right about a couple of things. Uh, I always take, trying to take the piss out of you. Uh, you're right that it was made by a father figure in my life, but not my platonic father. This was actually made by you. Um, Lucky, <laughs> what do we got? It was made by me. It was made by you. Jesus Christ, where did you get that? Uh, Discord. So, um, there's a guy who went that, to- That, that, wasn't made by me. Not at all. What do you mean it wasn't made by you? No, no, I didn't, I never made wine at my, that's, okay, yeah. This is from your school. Yeah. This is from your high school, and a guy called R, R, R Riley, who's on the Discord, got in touch with me and he said- Oh, man. Do you want to take the piss out of Brendan? And I said, absolutely, I want to take the piss out of Oh, that's Brandon. gold. That's fantastic. So, yeah, this is actually really interesting. This, I mean, interesting for me, for everyone watching at home, this is probably going to be boring as shit. So, uh, this here is a wine from Queensland. Yep. Uh, Queensland. From, from quite suburban Queensland, in fact. This comes from, I went to a high school guy, uh, place called Nudgee College. Um, they had a little wine program there. 2006, I was 16 years old. Yep. Uh, so, I actually wasn't, I didn't do ag at school. Okay. Uh, and I know... R. Riley, um, uh, I won't out, oust you, uh, but the um, uh, the variety of this, I mean, it's predominantly Syrah, but it's actually got a lot of uh, this other variety, Chambasun. Chambasun is a hybrid grape variety that grows particularly well in very humid places, and the reason why it got chosen to be planted in Queensland. But it doesn't really make good quality wine, it never has. And to be honest, the great terroir of suburban Brisbane uh, is not, not exactly <laughs> quite well renowned. <laughs> Riley, thank you very much for sending us this bottle That's of wine. That's hilarious. I've been really looking forward to giving this to Brendo for a while. And I'm also really annoyed and that thank you... thank you as well, by the way. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> that was and you've, awesome. you've also identified that annoyingly well in the sense that you're just like, yeah, it's some old wine that's not great quality juice that's gone into the bottle and been kept really well, which is exactly what it is. For me, I've drunk a lot of uh, I've drunk a lot of old wine out of Dad's cellar, and it's shocking how similar it smells to this. To be honest, with you. so you weren't wrong about that part either. I'm uh, really I'm really sorry that he didn't have anything to do with the wine, but still, pretty good time. Very cool. Uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you next week.